Welcome to Chase Oaks. We are so glad that you have joined us this weekend or turned us on today in any way, shape, or form. We are continuing a series entitled Rebranding Christianity. And it's this whole idea that if we really think about uh, Christianity in the 21st century, well, it looks a little bit different than it did in the first century. And what would it look like for us to be the kind of Jesus followers that really take on the brand of how it all got started. This series has been based off of a phenomenal book called Rebranding Christianity by our very own Jeff Jones. If you have not picked up a copy of this book, I can't encourage you enough to pick up a copy. There's a QR code there that you can scan. You can get it on Amazon or wherever books are sold. Um, also, um, not just buying the book is, is something that we think can create a movement around rebranding Christianity, but truly uh, sharing it uh, with a, a friend or a family member or uh, even pr potentially a, a coworker that you might know that has a, a faith as well that says, hey, I, I read this incredible book and I just can only imagine what would happen if you and I did this together. Uh, this weekend, we are gonna be talking about being the brand, truly wearing the brand everywhere that we go. Now, um, I don't know what you think about when you think of the brand of Christianity, but um, I actually did some research uh, coming into this weekend's message, and I was curious what Google thought about Christians, and so uh, what I typed in is, uh, why are Christians, and then I just let Google fill in what most people search for. Now, what most people search for when you, when you type in, you can do this, you can do this on your phone, you can do this on your computer, all right, don't take my word for it. Okay, why are Christians, number one, uh, persecuted, Number two, allowed to eat pork. <laughs> I don't know if you knew this about Christianity. I'm just telling you about the brand. All right, this is Google, not me, okay? Um, boycotting Disney and against yoga. Okay, that's our top four, okay? Just so you know, that's where we're at. Now, here's the deal. I don't know how you feel about Disney. I don't know where you're at with pork in your life. Um, and I don't know how you feel about yoga. And perhaps you've got some righteous reasons to, to have your deal with any of the above. But I just, I just got to ask us this weekend, is that what you want to be known for? Like, just think about that. Like, let's just say you got a good reason to just be so mad at Disney. Is that the brand you want walking around? Like, like, do we really believe that what our neighborhood and our schools and our, and our community really needs is the anti-yoga crew? Like, man, they're making a difference. You know what I mean? Like, like, at some point, you and I have to step back and go, man, what, what is it that we really, really want to be known for. Now, now for me, I, I tend to think about like the Christianity I grew up in. I'm, I'm a, I was a 90s Christian, which if you don't know what Christianity was in the 90s, I'm not even sure you're really a Christian because 90s Christian was a whole nother level of Christian, okay? Like I'm talking, this is when the bumper stickers started getting really hot, the t-shirts, um, the end times, like some people go, man, we're living in the end times right now. And, and I struggle with that because I've been living in the end times my whole life, okay? Like, it's like, it's always been the end times. Like, in the 90s, there was a great belief that Jesus Christ was coming back, and he is, but that he was coming back the year 2000. Specifically, I was taught that Jesus was coming back the year 2000, at midnight, New Year's Eve, watch this, Central Standard Time, okay? <laughs> I, I, that's what I thought. I grew up in Chicagoland area, and I thought, Central Standard Time, it's happening. I was so convinced that Jesus was coming back at midnight. I opted out of going to any New Year's Eve parties. I said, guys, I don't know what you want to be doing when the trumpet sounds, but I will not be partying. I tell you that much, okay? And so I literally, I literally opened the Bible, and I thought, what would be a great chapter for Jesus to catch me reading when he comes from the sky? You know what I mean? Like, like I really thought that that was gonna happen. And you already know what happened next. 2001 is what happened, okay? But yet there was this whole movement centered around the end times, and this is what Christians were known for. And then the TV and the internet and like, radio ministries, and all of a sudden Christianity began to have a whole new brand, a whole new 
reputation. And then, as I began to grow up, I began to think, man, what is it that I, that I want to be known for? And what is it that we should be known for? I, I love what it says in 2 Corinthians chapter 5. It says, therefore, if anyone is in Christ, he is a new creation. The old has passed away. Behold, the new has come. All this is from God, who through Christ reconciled us to himself and gave us the ministry of reconciliation. That is, in Christ God was reconciling the world to himself, not counting their trespasses against them and entrusting to us the message of reconciliation. Therefore, we are ambassadors for Christ, God making his appeal through us. We implore you on behalf of Christ, be reconciled to God. You and I are ambassadors for Jesus Christ everywhere that we go. I get to do a lot of, well, most of the work that I do throughout the week is in corporate America. And it's interesting whenever I begin to have a faith conversation how many people that aren't Christians believe they have to jump through so many hoops to become one? And I just, I just love reading this scripture because it's like, man, I just can't tell how many people I know that they just got some really bad mistakes, some big church no-nos. They stepped outside their marriage. They cheated. They defrauded a company. They've got some mistakes in their rearview mirror that they're just not proud of. But here comes the Apostle Paul writing a letter to the church in Corinth. And he says, hey, did you know that he didn't, he didn't count their trespasses against them? And, and then he, he says this in verse 21. It says, for our sake, he made him to be sin who knew no sin, so that in him we might become the righteousness of God. The Apostle Paul is going, hey, guess what? You're an ambassador for Christ, which means you get to walk around with good news. And what is that good news? You, we have been entrusted with a message of reconciliation. Hey, dear world, I know you've got some days and some nights in your life that you wish you could get back, but uh, your closeness to God, your relationship with God is not hinging on what you have done or have not done yet. No, your relationship with God, you have been reconciled to God through a man named Jesus Christ. And when you put your faith in him, you have all of the reconciliation that you need. That's exceptional news, especially <laughs> when you've got a lot of mistakes in your past. And so you and I are to be the carriers of that kind of good news everywhere we go. And so this weekend, I wanna challenge us to be the brand. And I wanna challenge us to be the brand in three very, very important areas of our life. And number one, I wanna encourage us to, to be the brand in our homes. Be the brand in our homes. I, I think it's gonna be very difficult for us to make a difference in the world if we fail to make a difference in our homes. Like, I don't know if you knew this, but you have a brand in your home. You, you may not feel like a company, but you have a brand. You are known for something in your home. Um, if your parents here today, uh, one of you is known as good cop, the other one's known as bad cop. It just is what it is. I'm just telling you, you have, you have a reputation. There is one that is weaker than the other. If the kids want ice cream on a school night, they know who to attack and win. And like there is, if, if they want money, they know who to go to. Like grandparents automatically get weak as soon as they walk through the door. I mean, all of us have a brand in our home. Do you know what yours is? And let me ask you this. Do you know what you want it to be? Because I, I got a couple of verses that I, I just, if you don't have a mantra, if you don't have something that you're steering towards, 
in your home, a couple of verses that I think could help you, a couple of verses I would print out, a couple of verses I would have on the wall, put it on the little board you have in your kitchen, Romans 12, 10. Love one another with brotherly affection. Outdo one another in showing honor. Outdo one another and showing honor, Put, get the family together. You, maybe it's just you and your roommate. You get some Taco Bell and you say, hey, let's just chat for a second. Here, here's gonna be our mantra. We're not just divvying up. You clean up your mess, I, I clean up my mess. No, sometimes I clean up yours. Why, because I'm trying to outdo you in showing honor. My oldest son hates cleaning up his younger brother's messes. And then I have to remind him that we clean up his all the time. <laughs> but hey, we're, we're trying to out-serve one another. I'm trying to out-serve my wife. I'm trying to out-serve anyone that comes in to my home. My wife really started this whenever uh, someone's at the house, whether it's a, an exterminator, whether it's a plumber, or whether someone is uh, just doing anything at our house at all. She always brings out water for them. Why? Because it's 115,000 degrees in Texas. Like, you're not a Christian if you're not passing out water right now, you know? It's just, no, we're gonna be the brand in our home. And it's, <laughs> it's kind of funny, preaching in Dallas, there was someone working on our security system a couple of weeks ago, and sure enough, they rang the doorbell, and they went, <gasps> Ryan Leak. I'm like, well, I'm glad I got water in my hand ready to go. He's like, dude, I just love your messages. I'm like, well, yeah, here you go. Here's the, here's the water. You know, that'd be messed up if I'm like, yeah, could you just get this stuff together? I, I'm kind of in a hurry. Man, how we treat people everywhere starting in our home is important. I'm a pastor's kid. I, I got to see a pretty good movie growing up, I watched my parents be the brand. But I, I can't tell you how many people I know that their parents are also pastors. And one of my friends, he says this, he says, man, I always used to love when friends came over to our house because that was the only time my dad got nicer. There are some people that are walking away from the faith because they saw their parents behave one way at church in a completely different way at home. They watch their parents treat strangers better than they treat their own kids. And so I think it's vitally important for you and I to be the kinds of people that say, you know what, I, I don't wanna go put on something at church. I actually wanna be something long before I ever even get to church. I, another verse that we, we like to hang our hats on is Colossians 3.13, bear with each other. Typically, the minute we hear bear with each other, we think of somebody else. Man, I gotta bear with this person, man. I just, oh man, I just, thank God I got grace for them. But I just want you to know when somebody reads that, they think of you every single time, okay? Like, we just have to have that in our minds. Like, somebody is bearing with me. I'm somebody else's Colossians 3.13. Bear with each other and forgive one another. If any of you has a grievance against someone, forgive as the Lord forgave you. You wanna know the most powerful tool that your family has for faith? It's not the church, it's you. Because they can watch someone give a message but it's way more powerful if they see somebody live that message. And when you are finding yourself having a grievance against someone, walking through forgiveness, and, and being a person that's willing to apologize first, when you feel like somebody owes you an apology, it's powerful. I watched my mom do that so many times. To this day, my mother, is consistently the first one to apologize. When a lot of times there's the person owes her one. I watched it, she never sat me down and said, hey Ryan, let me explain something to you. You wanna be the kind of person that apologizes quickly. 
She's never said those words, but she's lived those words. I've, I've watched it. And one of the toughest things I ever have to do is not even apologizing to my wife for something I've done wrong, but it's apologizing to my kids because it's weird. It's like, well, of course I was right, you know, because you kind of play judge, jury, and executioner, and so it's just like, it's weird as the judge to be like, yes, I was wrong, guilty. It's like, no, this doesn't make any sense. It's like, how did I get in this court case? But I have to admit, sometimes I've come at the wrong suspect. I've yelled at the wrong kid, and then it was like, oh, my bad. Now I gotta go apologize, but I, I, have, to, I have to practice what I preach. And I, I just gotta be honest, sometimes I just, I just get it wrong. I, like I just, I just miss completely. I thought about sharing awesome stories about how I've like endowed my children with all of these spiritual principles. You know, I thought, yeah, that'd be great for the weekend. You know, it'd be a great example for the whole church. But, but no, I, I mostly get it wrong. Um, there's. Uh, if you've heard me speak before, you know I like to wash my car like every single day. I have a problem. Pray for me. Is what it is. Uh, there's this. You know, you're gonna have kids, your car's gonna be dirty. No, your car is gonna be dirty. My car is not gonna be dirty. And so, I got wipes, I got the whole thing. It's, it's a thing, and it's, it's a part of, of therapy for me. Every single day, it's, it's kind of my wusa, I just clean the car. So, you know, I got these leather seats, and I just, you know, wipe them down with an armor all. I got it nice and pristine, and then, my son decides with his little dusty Crocs to like, instead of going out of his door, he decides to walk over the middle council and I could see dust print after dust print after dust print and decided to just come out my door. And I'm like, have you lost your mind? I don't know what's gonna go on here, but I'm a Christian, I'm gonna be the brand and I'm gonna give you mercy for the first strike, but there will not be a second or a third. Do you understand me? He's like, Dad, my bad, I'm sorry. Yeah, okay, yeah, yeah, you're bad, you sorry. Now go in the house, okay? <laughs> Next day, he decides to lose his mind a second time, like maybe he's got amnesia. Print, 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 print. And I'm like, Jackson, I don't know how, I don't know what I have to say to you, but now I might have to put hands on you. I might have to put these paws on you in a minute. Like, like now, I'm like, are you not listening to me? How dare you disobey your father? I'm like losing. I'm like, buddy, strike three. You don't want to see strike three. Next day. Poop, 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 poop. And I just blew a gasket. I'm like, I don't know what he thinks is going on in this dictatorship, but I promise you, it is not gonna be good for you, dude. I'm about to, I'm like, and he just starts weeping, and I had no compassion whatsoever. I'm like, this is my car, and you're just, what, a human? And so, um, <laughs> and with tears in his eyes, he's just pointing to the back seat. I'm like, Jackson! Why do you keep walking out my door? And he goes, the child lock is on. I went, oh, so you can't get out the bed. So that's why you keep crawling. Man, my bad, man. Come over here, man. You know I was just playing with you anyways, man. It ain't even that big of a deal, you know? Who put the child lock on? Your mom took my card? That's probably what happened. <laughs> no, then you just, you got to get down on his level and go, my bad. Will you forgive me? And then you kind of step back and go, it's just a car. That will be rusty in a few years anyways. And you just have to step back and practice what you preach. I play a lot of worship music in our house just because we just feel like it's, it's just kind of what we do. I encourage you to do that. Because it's hard to be the brand in your home if you never saw a brand in your home. And especially for men, it's hard. Because you, you're like walking around your house hoping a theologian rings your doorbell and teaches your kids the Bible and you're just like, they're not coming. And some days you wake up and you feel like, I'm not equipped to do this. But if God gave them to you, tag, you're it. So you just, you gotta, you gotta be what you can be and you, you gotta try. 
And so sometimes that's just turning on some YouTube and just letting worship fill your house. It'll change the atmosphere. So my, song, my sons know quite a few different worship songs that I've just played throughout the years. There's one song, though, in particular that we've never played. It's just really old, but it's also my favorite song. And so he hears me singing it in the shower. He hears me singing it, just humming it down, down the street. And he's eight years old now, going on nine, so he's heard me just sing this song for forever. It's a song called Healer. I believe you're my healer. I believe you're more than enough for me. And I've just, I need that song often. And a couple of weeks ago, I hear my son walking around the house singing. I believe you're my healer. And I just thought, one day, my son will be in a hospital room and he won't know what to say, but maybe he'll know what to sing. And I wish I could tell you, I sat him down and said, let me teach you a song. <laughs> I just sing the song. Some things are taught, some things are caught. At some point, each and every one of us, Christian or not, you gotta ask yourself, what do I want people catching in my house? What do I want people catching in our home, I hope it's a home that's full of, of love and forgiveness and serving others for Christmas. We said, hey, we, scripture teaches us to love our neighbors and, and I just think, what would I want our neighbors to do for us? I would want them to give us Tiff's treats cookies. That would be awesome. And so, so we just ordered Tiff's treats and we just had them bring just dozens and dozens of cookies to our house and we wrapped it with Christmas and then and me and my sons, we just walked the block and just kept dropping off cookies. Dad, why are we doing this? Because it's Christmas. And we love our neighbors, the ones we know and the ones we don't, and perhaps the ones we will get to know because people will come to our door now because they know we got cookies. <laughs> we don't always get it right, but we're trying to. We know what we want to be known for in our home, our home is far from perfect. Sometimes I put our cars over our children. <laughs> but we have enough conviction to pause long enough to go, hey, sometimes mommy and daddy get it wrong. And we want you to know at the end of the day, we're humble enough to apologize when we are wrong. And we have to pray that that's something that they're going to catch as well. The second area I think is vitally important to be the brand is to be the brand in our communities. Be the brand in our communities. Ephesians 4, one through three says, as a prisoner for the Lord, then I urge you to live a life worthy of the calling you have received. Be completely humble and gentle. Be patient, bearing with one another in love. Make every effort to keep the unity of the Spirit through the bond of peace. Uh, regardless of where you're going this week, HOA meeting, mall, movies, restaurants, be the brand. I, mean, I just want you to walk around like, you know what? There's somebody in my life, there's somebody in my space, there's somebody in my community that could use a little bit of faith. Uh, earlier in the summer, I, I, I gave a message about how we can share our faith in our community by asking people that serve us, um, is there anything going on in your life that I can pray for? Is there anything going on in your life that I can pray for? If you ask uh, every person that serves you, every barista, every waitress, waiter, anybody that's being paid to serve you, just pause, just for a moment. Hey, is, is there anything going on in your life? that I can pray for. You'd be surprised what a stranger will tell you. And, and since that message, I've gotten so many messages on LinkedIn, or social media, or emails, texts that says, man, I, I tried this, it's crazy, man. <laughs> you would not believe what they will tell you at Starbucks. I'm like, I know, man, it's crazy. And I think that that's it's an effective way to be the brand in our community. I think another way that we could be the brand in our community is just through generosity. I used to have so many friends that were waiters and waitresses all over the city, and I would say, hey, what, what are your favorite times to work? 
And what are your least favorite times to work? And this is what they said. They said, we hate working on Sunday afternoons. And I said, why? They said, oh, that's when the Christian crowd comes in. I said, what, what do you mean? He goes, oh, dude, they're the cheapest. They're the ones that never tip. I said, really? He's like, yeah, man. Like, it's, he goes, none of my friends, we, we avoid Cheesecake Factory on Sunday afternoons. Like, we, just, we, just don't, we, just, we just don't do it. And I just think, you and I have a great opportunity everywhere we go to say, you know what? If, if they're gonna serve us, may we be the best table that they've had all week long. And maybe we pray for them. Or maybe they got the biggest tip they've ever gotten in their life. And trust me, when you leave a big tip, they're gonna wanna know why. <laughs> and you have an opportunity to be the brand. To say, hey, maybe you don't think you deserve that. I get it. But I'm a product of getting what I didn't deserve. It's the grace and mercy of Jesus Christ. So why couldn't I give somebody else something that they don't deserve? Thanks for serving us tonight. You'd be surprised the difference that you, you can make. Here's the deal. I, I realize that the tipping culture is getting out of hand. I will give you that. Because now they want to tip for pickup. You're like, wait a second. I did the work to get here. Why am I paying you what I could have paid somebody else to come bring me this food? It's like, this is a pickup order. Now I feel pressure. Starbucks is now passing the, the coder out the window now. Give me a tip. It's like, I don't like the forceness. Okay, I, I, I was going to give you a tip out of the kindness of my heart. Now I feel like it's a guilt tip. You know what I'm saying? It's like, nah, I don't like this. Okay, nevertheless, I don't know what your tipping philosophy is, but whenever you get there, be the brand. Be the brand. You may be the only Christ follower that they encounter all day. And may that experience be a great one. Colossians 3.17 says, and whatever you do, in word or deed, do everything in the name of the Lord Jesus, giving thanks to God the Father through him. Whatever you do, in word or deed. You, you wanna know another phenomenal opportunity that you and I have to be the brand is on social media. And I know, you're gonna hear me say this a lot, 2024 is coming. <laughs> Another election season is coming and I just think you and I have a grand opportunity to be the brand on social media. And so if you go, man, how do I be the brand on social media? Well, a couple things, one, pray before you post, okay? Pray before you post. If you post before praying, it's not gonna be good. I'm just telling you that right now, okay? Pray before you post. And secondly, you and I have to step back and just go, I know we all have such strong polarizing feelings about social media. Someone's like, oh, it's not gonna be on it at all. I, I would encourage you. You want to have a healthy relationship with social media, which means you could look at it and go, there's so much negative. That's actually a good thing for you and me if we wanna be the brand. Let's go to the darkest place of the world and shine a light. If it's so negative, thank God they follow you because you get to be positive. So go change it. Go and be the brand. Even if that just means, hey, I just, I post a verse. Guess what? Somebody needs that verse. You go, man, I only have three likes. Three people need it to hear God's word from you that day. So go be the light in word or deed. Be the brand in our communities. Uh, the last area I think it's important for us to be the brand is in our career. Be the brand in our career. I love what 1 Thessalonians 4 says. It says, yet we urge you, brothers and sisters, to do so more and more and to make it your ambition to lead a quiet life. You should mind your own business and work with your hands just as we told you so that your daily life may win the respect of outsiders and so that you will not be dependent on anybody. Now, I don't know if you do this, but on average, you get 79 years on this planet. I pray you get 20 more than that, but average is 79, that's the lifespan. This is the average. Now, I don't know if you know, but most of our life, 33% of it, you're gonna spend it sleeping. 
So we're already at a third of our life. <sighs> Knocked out. This is done. All right. So, so with the rest of it, you know, 13 whole years, if you just did all the math, 13 years of your life, it's going to be spent working. 13 years. Total. Like, you're, total, you're like, that's, we are going to spend the majority of our human interaction at work. And so if we don't bring our faith to the place we're gonna spend most of our time on the planet, then where, where are we gonna live it out? You are not subscribing to a brand of Christianity that is a Sunday thing. No, this is a, a daily thing. I, I, love the, I, I just love the phrasing that the Apostle Paul used, so that your daily life may win the respect of outsiders. I gotta encourage us to be the brand in our careers. One of the mantras I, I, I work by is show before I tell. Show before I tell. I want people to see my brand of Christianity long before I talk about it. Which is why I love the work that I get to do in corporate America. Because afterwards people will be like, you are you a Christian? I am, yes. What gave it away? I could tell. I went, I wasn't trying to hide it. I was actually trying to show it. <laughs> I am trying to be one of the best communicators on the planet. Not so I can get a bigger following. Not so I could make more money. Not so I could write more books. Not so I can be more famous. I'm trying to be one of the best communicators on the planet because of who I represent. And I realize I have to be the brand everywhere I go. And it is one of our greatest opportunities to rebrand Christianity. I was speaking for one of the top companies in this country. I was speaking to 6,000 of their leaders. And I, I, I was flying there and I said to myself, Ryan, be awesome. Be phenomenal. Blow their minds. This is not about my ego, but I just think, man, it, what could happen? if I actually won the respect of outsiders. And so uh, I'm speaking in this room and, and on, on the stage was a plasma screen where people online could chat live while I was talking. And, uh, and one guy writes, he goes, I planned on multitasking during this entire presentation, but I have not been able to turn away from the screen. Second guy writes, I've worked here for 35 years. This is the greatest presentation I have ever seen in my life. And then the whole crowd. I was like, man, all right, all right, all right. Third question. What gets you out of bed in the morning? And the lady doing the moderating, I could tell she was a Christian because she saw the third question. She said, and the third question is, what gets you out of bed in the morning, Ryan? I said, oh, that would be my face. She said, I know that's right. And I was like, oh, it's game time now, you know? And so... And I had three minutes to share my faith with one of the largest corporations in the country. All because I spent an hour gaining their respect. Can I encourage each and every one of us as Christians, can I beg you this weekend, be so stinking good at your job. I don't care what it is. Be excellent at what you do. If you are a nanny, be the best nanny on the planet. I mean, clean up poop, mop floors. You're like, no, 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 that's not my job. I know. Go above and beyond. And be the brand. If you mow lawns, listen, make sure that yard is pristine. If you are an accountant, be really good at math. If you are a comedian, be funny, okay? If you are an artist, be creative. If, if, if you are a financial advisor, don't cheat people. <laughs> and help people even when you don't get a commission. Be excellent. If you're a social media manager, study every platform to make sure that your organization is successful, or if you are in communication, study every single medium you possibly can to try and get better every single day. May the people that work with us go, I don't know about those Christians, but let me tell you something, I love working with them. Because there's nobody better at their job. Because they take their jobs so seriously. 
you and I should be the kinds of people to say, you know what? I wanna be so good at my job, not to get a raise, <laughs> not to get a promotion, not to get another title, no. I wanna be so good at my job because of who I represent. Here's what I know to be true about you and me. Um, there is somebody that works with us that knows we're a Christian and they have an idea about Christianity. And, and here's the deal, uh, most people got their experience from Christianity one Christian at a time. And if they had a negative experience, guess what? They can get a positive experience, one Christian at a time. There's nobody that emails better, there's nobody that Zooms better, there's nobody that, re there's nobody that brings a positive attitude to the workforce. Can I encourage you with something? Your attitude is the gospel. And it's the one thing you can control. I know there's a lot of change in organizations all across the country and everybody's got a different attitude and opinion about it. But if you're a Christian, you have a grand opportunity to go, you know, I'm gonna have the best attitude here. I may not be the most talented, I may not be the most educated, but I can have the best attitude. And maybe I can win the biggest smile contest. And I'm just gonna, I've just decided, I, I wanna be so good at my job that even people that aren't Christians go, maybe I should be one. And may your boss go, why don't you be more like them? Why, because they're always trying to outserve people. They're always trying to get better at their job. They don't settle for the status quo. When things don't go well for them, they still bring a positive attitude to what we're trying to do. Can you imagine the brand of Christianity, how it would change? If all of us, regardless of what our job is, if all of us just decided, I'm gonna be so stinking good at what I do. If, I, if you're a musician, I mean, practice your tail off. Be remarkable at what you do. Because there is somebody that is watching you and perhaps God gave you a musical ability, maybe God gave you ability to teach. He gave, he gave you that job for a reason, to be his ambassador. And my prayer for us is that we would truly win the respect of outsiders because we've decided to be so excellent at what we do. So in closing, I just, I wanna ask us once again, what are we known for? What are we known for? And, and, and what do we want to be known for? Like some of us would never even thought about it. We think, man, my reputation is just my reputation. No, here's the beauty, beautiful thing about life. You actually can pick the direction of your life. But just know this, every single one of us has a brand. Every single one of us has a reputation. You give someone a feeling every time your name hits their inbox because we all have people in our life, when we see their name pop up on, on the, our caller ID, we get an instant anxiety. We go, oh no, not them. And they pop up in our inbox. There are some people in your inbox right now that emailed you a month ago. You don't even want to respond. It might be a simple yes, but their name gives you anxiety. Like, I don't even want to talk to them right now. Like, we have to realize we could be that person. And this is my hope and prayer for us, is that we would want to be known as people, when, when people see our name pop up on their phone, on their computer, they go, 100%. This email is going to be encouraging, helpful, excellent. May we be the kinds of people that truly are the brand of Christianity that was so compelling in the first century that people gave up their lives for. They loved one another at such a high level that people go, this doesn't make any sense. Like, why would you, why would you die for them? Why would you sacrifice that? Why would you sell your house? Why would you give up your stuff for other people? That kind of brand of Christianity, I think, could change the world. So yeah, I'm gonna encourage you to be the brand in your home. Start there. Encourage you to be the brand in our communities. When you go to the gym, when you go to the mall, every restaurant, there's somebody there that needs you to be the brand. And last, I want us to be the brand in our careers. May we be so good at what we do 
that other people respect our craft at a level that says, hey, <laughs> I want to know. We'll get you out of bed in the morning. God, I thank you so much for the opportunity we've had to look at your word this weekend. I pray, God, that you would help us be the brand. Lord, with our families, our households, our roommates, I, I, I pray, God, that you would help us walk and live with the kind of Jesus love that makes an impact in our homes. God, I pray that everywhere we go, that we would have our head on a swivel, that we would know that it matters how we treat people in public, grocery store, wherever we are. Lord, I, I pray that you would give us divine appointments for people that need to hear from you. And lastly, Lord, I pray that you would help us be the brand at our careers. Help us to be the kinds of people that work so hard and so diligently because of who we truly work for. In Jesus' name we pray. Everybody say it. Amen. Go ahead and stand to your feet. We're getting ready to sing a song called Highest Praise. And I just believe in, in these next few moments, God's just gonna put some incredible things on our heart and how we can be the brand in our communities and ultimately lift up his name and give him the highest praise. So join us as we sing. Thank you.